tale as old as time. Today, we're taking on the ubiquitous lawnmower blade machete. Yes, the call of this pre-fashioned bar of unknown steel type with a hole in the middle is somehow irresistible to the bladesmith. I've made my share, but this time I have a cool old-timey lawnmower with its original handle and everything, so let's get it unwrapped and take a closer look. It's going to be a blast figuring out which parts are hardenable steel and which parts aren't, but first, a word from our sponsor, NordVPN. Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about NordVPN. It's hard to keep our information safe in the digital age. Let NordVPN help you keep your junk to yourself. I'm talking about planning my next vacay. You can't find me. Or these days, my next staycay. You got to keep a vibe going. I've got questions I never asked in elementary school. Questions about the deep state. I don't want the deep state to know. Do you want Twitter to know that you don't know what gaslighting means? Go to nordvpn.com slash greenbeetle and keep it private with NordVPN's high-speed access, unlimited bandwidth, and a money-back guarantee. 68% off NordVPN now, only $3.71 per month for a limited time plus a free month, or use the coupon code GREENBEETLE at checkout. Surf the internet with impunity like I do. All right, back to business. Let's get some bits cut out of here and spark tested to see if they have enough carbon to make a good blade. In simple carbon steels, we can get a clue into their carbon content by seeing what kind of sparks they produce. Few short sparks that don't flower like we see here are a sign of low carbon steel or iron that won't harden enough to make a good edge. The second piece has more carbon than the first, but I'm not seeing a lot of bursting. Here I'm going to test the blade, which shows some copious long sparks that burst or flower at the end, indicating high carbon steel. Let's check the starting HRC of the mower blade. It looks like about 45, and that's pretty low to start, but I'm sure they anticipate you rolling over some rocks and they don't want the blade to crack if it's too hard. Let's quench our pieces in Parks 50 and see what happens. We want to make sure that we can actually harden this to around 60. These hardness files aren't perfect, but they're all we have, so let's check what we got. We see the axle didn't harden, which we expected. The frame, which had more sparks than the axle, really didn't harden either. And our blade got to around 63 HRC, which is perfect. Honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was hoping there'd be more usable steel. So let's go back to the mower and check some different pieces and see if there's anything else we can use. Nothing doing. Looks like the only usable blade steel are the mower blades themselves.
drilling this is pretty difficult. You know, it's not flat, so it just sort of wobbles around and the drill bit starts going at different angles. And you can see here I drilled to the side of the, the rivet hole. So, you know, I'm not sure spending the time to take all this stuff off and earn this little extra bit here of metal is going to be possible or, or worth it or whatever. I think I'm just going to cut around it and we'll use these uh, this area in between the rivets. All right, this is a pretty good chunk of steel, but I want more. I'm aiming for a Golok style machete about 12 to 14 inches in length. So let's add some more material from the frame and make a San Mai style blade. This could look pretty cool and it'll give us some extra material to play with to make sure we get our desired length. Here the edge has been ground off and I've etched the steel. Our hardenable steel core, the blade, is dark and in the center and our low carbon steel is silver and on the outside, that outer jacket it really compressed down. It's quite thin. Hey, I lost my gloves. Sometimes due to profound laziness, I don't want to wear shoes and that's no good when hammering hot steel. So... So far, so good. A little bit on the heavy side. Let's get it normalized and start our heat treating. Speaking of, how do you heat treat a mystery steel? <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to cycle it at 1550 degrees, then 1500 degrees, and then we'll quench from around 1500 degrees too and just see what happens.
So you guys have probably noticed this is really thick. I could have forged this thinner, you know, and it would have brought the, the uh, material down like this, you know, this way. Um, and I wouldn't have to grind off a whole lot that way, and I just have to grind off maybe this much to get an edge, and that leave this much jacketed along the sides. But we wouldn't remove enough material. One of the issues I'm facing here is the weight. This is just too clunky and heavy, and that really wouldn't remove a lot of material if we forged that all the way out to shape. So I can leave it like this, and then just grind the bevels and remove quite a bit of material, um, but it pushes the grind line back. And since our outer coating is so thin, that will probably mean only this much of our spine, a very thin area of our spine, you know, this area is going to be ultimately be jacketed, which isn't the intent of this project, but that's just sort of how it's going to have to be, because i got to get some weight off this thing. Don't forget to file in your shoulders before hardening your blade. That's something I do <laughs> do quite a bit of. Rookie mistake. I'm also going to clay the spine here. I don't want to deal with warping, and I don't want to deal with any cracks down the center of the blade, which sometimes happens with San Mai, and I've found that claying the spine can help with that at times. I don't think it's going to produce a hamon in this case. Well, quenching could have gone better. Poor planning, a horizontal quench tank, and so on. I repeated a single normalization cycle between each quench and kept my fingers crossed. I think we did all right. This blade is not about fit and finish. It's sort of a rough and tumble post-apocalyptic style motif with a forge finish on it. And I'm dipping it in ferric chloride to reveal the sand my construction. It was finished on a Scotch-Brite belt. So there's no hand sanding. It's going to be interesting to see how it etches. I usually hand sand blades that are going to get etched. This will be a bit of an experiment. If possible, we should make our machete handle from the mower handle, which is in super bad shape. So we're going to have to poke around and find a usable piece. These cracks can get pretty deep. So that piece looked usable, but by the time I got all the cracks out from under the surface, it's too narrow for our handle. I'm going to have to grab another piece and try again. That's better. I think that'll work. Now, what if I can use the end of the handle on the butt cap of our knife? Shaping the wood to fit under this cap is a bit of a tall order. I need to think on it while we work on the handle a little more. I might not be able to pull that off. While that's going on, I'll tell you that I tempered the machete at 325 degrees, thinking the steel might be 1040 or 1050 ish, which actually left it too hard, well over 60. So I tempered it again at 375, and it dropped in just north of 55 HRC, which is softer than I wanted it. But I'm not going to do another quench. We'll just have to live with the 55 to 57 ish HRC on this thing. It is an integral style handle, so it doesn't really need a spacer, but it does need some weight near the handle, so I'm going to go ahead and put this thing on it.
Regarding incorporating that piece of the lawnmower handle into our butt cap, I decided that it was indeed too ambitious. So I trimmed it down into a square to fit into this area I'm carving out, but while I was trying to hammer out one of the corners flat, it cracked on me. So I'm going to go ahead and use a larger piece from the frame and adjustments will be made, no problem. It's into and then out of the Danish oil and it looks pretty good. There's a hole, some termite damage, and cracks that are more readily apparent now. I'm going to add a worn look to the wood because of all of these existing defects and the fact that it'll fit the overall rustic appearance we're looking for. So I've sanded out the stain in some areas, then restained it, which even darkens the unsanded spots more and adds sort of this two-tone effect. And then I've sort of handled it vigorously with dirty hands before sealing it with some furniture wax. And overall, it looks nice and well-aged or distressed now. Paper slicing time, it's at a thousand grit. Time for some choppy choppy. And it does okay, you gotta forgive my clumsiness. It's a tad bit heavier than I wanted, but it still does pretty good on the small green stuff and the big stuff too. You know, overall, just getting outside and swinging a blade is always a lot of fun. And you know, tearing up nature is a great thing. Nature has it really easy in our society these days, and I feel like we need to put it in its place sometimes, so. Edge retention? Uh, it's not very good. Remember, we got it a few HRC softer than I wanted to, somewhere around 56. Who knows what the steel is? It's still lifting a fingernail, but it wants to tear paper more than cut it at this point. At any rate, it was an interesting lawnmower and a super fun project. I had a great time. You guys have a good one. Yeah.